everyone, this is Robin, and it's time for Cricut series number 10 in my Cricut series videos. I am going to just take a break from all the techniques and the buttons, and I'm just going to make a simple card. So I'm going to show you how to make a monogram card using storybook cartridge. All right, what I'm going to do first is put some colors of cardstock that I want to use on here, the raspberry fizzle and the basic black. And I'm going to, I know in my previous videos I have shown you how to put your paper in the bottom of the left hand side when you hit paper saver in the right hand corner. If you're just going to cut one or two things and you know it's not going to run off the paper or be too big, I always just put it in the top right hand corner. Um, or if I want to use my mat up, I will put it in different spots that haven't been used very much and then I'll just use my arrows key on my Cricut. So I'm going to load the paper and I need to find the scallop that I want to use. Where'd it go? Okay, storybook cartridge. This is great. It has a lot of scallop circles, squares, ovals. It's a really good all around one. I usually use mini monograms if I'm just going to make a quick um, circle that's scalloped because I have just been used to that. But I also think this one's nice. See, there's a nice scalloped oval right there. Scalloped oval. I just need a scalloped circle. And I'm pretty sure this cartridge has one. There's one that looks like a flower, but I want one that's a little bit... Let's see if I can find what I like. Okay, I'm going to use this one right here. And so what this is, it's the shadow feature of this flower, but it turns out to be a scallop. So I need to find out. It's the eye button button. Hit it twice so it turned up. Turn on your shadow key. Did I have that covered up? It's right here. And then I want to hit my shift button. Button. And then I'm going to hit I. So it's right up here. Let me zoom in on that. On my keyboard. The I button. And then right over in my window should have a picture of the scallop. Okay, now what I need to figure out is what size I want it. And I'm not quite sure. And then right over in my window should have a picture of the scallop. Okay, now what I need to figure out is what size I want it. And I'm not quite sure <clears throat> it's going to be a regular card. So I don't want it to be too big. I'm thinking two and a quarter. I might do two. So let me try with start with two and a quarter. And then, <clears throat> and that looks a little big to me. So I'm going to try two, and I'm going to show you a trick. When you change your, if you want to change your size, you can still hit your repeat last because the size will just change with the repeat last, um, which is really easy and quick to know. If you just want to keep trying different sizes, you just hit repeat last. Let me see that too. Mm, let's see. Um, I want it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to do one and three quarter and hit repeat last. Okay, let's see this, baby. Okay, this is about the size I want it right here. Perfect. There's my little scallop. And now I need to pick my letter. So I can just... Now, for those of you who don't know what load last means, load last is a button. It's above load paper. If you hit load last when you're loading your paper, it will just go back. If you have not turned off your machine, it will just go back to where it was before. So now I'm going to take my arrow and kind of put it up here. Okay, now I need an R. I need to make sure I take off my function key. Hit my R button. Where are you, R? R. Okay, here you are. Here you are, R. Okay, R, R, R. I'm so funny. Okay, I think I'm <laughs> after I crack myself up. Okay, there's my R. Ooh, and it looks so pretty. You know, let's see here. I don't know if that's going to be, that's going to be too big. So I'm going to make my R a little bit smaller. Repeat last. That is a beautiful R. 
Wow, I love that. So unload paper. Let me just see here. Okay. Probably need my spatula here. Spatula. Okay, let me try this. Whoops. Behind the scenes. Okay. And that will be very, very pretty right there. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to make a card out of it. Hope you enjoy. All right, I start with cutting an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. I'm cutting this down to, first I'm cutting it in half. Um, five and a half is a half sheet of cardstock, eight and a half by 11, and then I'm cutting it down to two and three quarters by four. I'm going to be using this for a mat. So it's two and three quarters, and this is the paper cutter that I bought from Hobby Lobby. It's just the Probo Craft cheap one. And I use it a lot when I'm just doing little things at my table. I'm cutting the black cardstock also at four and two and three quarters. And now I'm going to be using my cuddle bug. The cuddle bug is really fun. Um, I just use it to make textures. So this is a cuddle bug embossing folder. It's called Swiss Dots, and I use it a lot to just give a the dotted texture. So what you do is you put the A mat, I um, can't think of the name of them, on the bottom and it's sandwiched between the two B plates. And that's how you emboss cardstock. This is the white Stampin' Up! Craft ink pad. And there's my friend Carly's hands. There they are again. Okay. And all I'm doing is just pulling it away um, so it just goes over the top of the bumps. It doesn't actually go to the bottom of the, you know, cardstock. This is an eight and a half by five and a half piece of the Raspberry Fizz cardstock by Paper Tray Ink. It is just an eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock cut in half, and that's at five and a half. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where I want to put everything and how I want it to be situated, kind of. Just really a basic card. That's mono adhesive that I used. I didn't pull out my big ATG gun. Just a little quick job. And when you're using the embossing, when you emboss your paper, you want to make sure that you put the adhesive all the way around it or it will get bumpy. It'll look really bumpy. Okay, so now I want to add this really cute polka dotted ribbon by Paper Tray Ink. It coordinates with the Raspberry Fizz um, or fizzle, whatever the name of it, um, the cardstock. I'm trying to think of how to do this because I've already attached the layer on. So what, here's just a little trick that I learned. You just take your scissors and where you want your ribbon, you just do kind of little, kind of little oval so you can fit your ribbon through there. Mm, I think I want a little bit bigger here. Okay, there we go. And then you just put it through there. It's just a quick and easy way to do it if you don't want to put it around your layer first. And this is just a simple bow. If you watch my tying bow video, it's the first video I ever made on my blog. It's episode one. It shows how I do just quick and simple bows. Okay, I'm trying to do something really fancy that kind of backfires on me. So just you just fold your ribbon in half. And this is where I made the mistake. I did it backwards on this side. I don't know what I was thinking here. I don't know what I was thinking. So, look at really kind of made a huge mess. So now I just have to cut straight across instead of having my little fancy ribbon. But that's okay. Just kind of want to show the basics of this card. Using your Cricut and just the cuddle bug for texture. You could also, instead, if you don't have the cuddle bug, you could just use a two and two and three quarter by four inch pattern paper that coordinates, and then you don't have to worry about adding texture or anything like that. And then these are pop dots from Hobby Lobby, and I need to add another one because that one's just not going to stick. So here we go. I'm getting it now, and I'm adding it on. Okay, here we go. And ta-da, that's the card.